Available now on 5 TV One, the short form comedy series Stitzville on Patrol, created by 27 time Academy Award watcher Christopher Redmond, who joins us on Canada Now. And Christopher, the trailer for the show, it was so good that when my kids tried to interrupt me while watching it, I just gave them up for adoption. That's it. They're done. Good. Cut them out. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. It was that good. And look, the, the show is about a man in Stitzville. Uh, who is uh, a, quote, neighborhood watch enthusiast, a wannabe community bylaw officer. And I, 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 having seen the show now, I I, I can't help uh, but smile and shake my head every time I think of him. Well, he's the hero that, um, you know, Sissel didn't know they needed, I think. Uh, (laughs) You know, enforcing grass that's too long, regulations for that, just really tattletailing on anyone who uh, who's got a line. Yeah, and uh, on Twitter, uh, he's keeping a stink eye on Stitzville. That's what you have on at Stitz Patrol uh, on Twitter. Is this a well therapeutic way for you to put to put on air the things that really bug you and, and and have someone else call it out? Is that what this is here? You know. At its core, I actually think it's just a love letter to um, to Ottawa and to, but specifically to kind of even the suburbs and this idea that, you know, there's a there's a level of perfection I think that all suburbs sort of try to achieve. Um, they always fall short in little places here and there. And I just wanted someone who uh, was really just going for it. And they really just thought this this place should be heaven on earth. It should be perfect if it wasn't just for that piece of litter over there and that woman looking at me funny over there and that half-hearted hello that I got at the grocery store. And if everyone just tried a little harder, my God, this would be the perfect place. Yeah, he's he's passionate about where he lives, and, and I like that point of view. And when Tom Cruise couldn't cross the border due to the pandemic, you got Ben Milks to start oh, it as, instead. It's a sore spot. I mean, you had to bring it up, didn't you? I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, but he's he's Tom Cruise is, is executive producer in spirit, so at least you have that. Well, that's right. I mean, Tom Cruise, uh, people outside of Ottawa might not know, but he actually lived in Ottawa for um, really the three best years of his life, uh, probably when he was about age 10 to 13. Um, he lived here, and, and he has really been looking for an excuse to come back to Ottawa. I think that's pretty obvious. He's uh, just never really found the right opportunity. So, you know, a community TV show was right, right, you know, the bullseye yeah. of, I think, what would have attracted him back here. And um, we were so close. I mean, uh he was just salivating over the opportunity, I'm sure. But, yeah, COVID hit. He couldn't come. And so I just really slummed it and just kind of eeny, meeny, miny mowed someone uh, who lives in Stittsville and uh, cast him instead. <laughs> well, he does uh, a great job. So maybe this was all uh, a blessing in disguise. Um, you started production in October. Given the pandemic, you had to redevelop the whole concept. Yeah, it was meant to be a bigger production. Um you know, it was going to be a buddy cop series originally. Um, and, of course, we had huge stunts. I mean, we were going to do just just incredible stunts, multi-million dollar mm. things that would have blown people's minds. Yeah. But because right. of the pandemic and only because of the pandemic, we, we really scaled it down to uh, just kind of falling on wet grass and, um, you know, kind of trying to TJ Hooker over the hood of a very old Jetta. Um, <laughs> the kind of stuff we could we could achieve during during pandemic restrictions when you only have a few people you're allowed on set and and unfortunately no you know no stunt professionals no but uh that's part of the charm of the show did did you mostly did you mostly shoot one character outdoors it seems like yeah we pretty much stuck outside uh the entire time we do have an episode uh titled home invasion therapy um in which our main character simon um you know, breaks into a home uh, just to kind of prove how easy it is for criminals to break into your home. Um, it doesn't go doesn't go as planned necessarily. He's, uh, he's trying a new form of therapy, which you know takes the best parts of of a home invasion, like the trauma, and uh, you know takes away all the danger, like like the murdering. Um, but it doesn't maybe go as well as he was hoping. Well, it's a, it's filmed doc style. Like, did, did you did you drive around and improv? Many of the scenes? I mean, it is a scripted comedy. Uh, we do have, you know, an episode planned out, kind of a beginning, a sort of middle end. Yeah. But as we're going, 
we couldn't help but um, just use what we were seeing. And Ben Milks, Milks who plays the the main character, is is a great improviser as well. So there's definitely a, a lot of off the cuff improvisation, and we want it to feel very natural as well. So um, the fact that it's scripted, we don't want to uh, lean on that too hard, and and just have some fun with with the situations that we get ourselves into. Yeah, are, are citizens in the show like because it's 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 fun if that. If they are in fact citizens, it's fun seeing them like, get pissed off when they get a ticket or something. Yeah, uh, people would walk by, and uh, every once in a while, they would wonder what we're doing, and we would uh, we would ticket them for their curiosity, and uh, they didn't always appreciate that. Um, so sometimes they would uh, make it into the show with their faces um, really half-heartedly blurred. I'm, I'm not, I'm yes, not half-heartedly. I'm try too hard to blur them out. <laughs> what a lousy job it looks like uh, was done because uh, I, I could clearly see who that is. I could yeah, clearly see who that is. Our blurring department really, really needs uh, a stern talking to, <laughs> let me tell you. Did you ever have anyone uh, that, that really lost it on you, that really got pissed off and really got upset, that maybe you didn't use in the show? Um, no, we did use them in the show when they got really upset. That's kind of the, the beauty oh, of the whole good. thing. There is um, a rather famous... Uh, Stith Villian, uh, who owns a coffee shop, who um, we investigated a crime around her place. Uh, people outside of Ottawa might know Kathleen Edwards owns a coffee shop in Ottawa. Mm, and, um, yeah. yeah, she may or may not have been too happy with us at one point and may or may not uh, be featured in the show. Love you, Kathleen. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, uh, you grew up in uh, St. Paul, Alberta, Peace River, uh, Alberta, uh, as well. Went to high school, North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Went on to Carleton University in Ottawa, Ontario, where you live now. How, uh, if at all, has living in different parts of Canada helped you to create uh, truly Canadian work? I actually think, yeah, you're hitting on it there. The idea that I've lived in so many places helps me see what's common about all of these small towns and even a city. So even though it's called Stittsville on Patrol and we really, you know, zero in on some specifics of Stittsville, um, the idea itself was born from when I lived in Saskatchewan and I would roam around bored at nights with my buddy and we'd bring a flashlight and a camera and get ourselves into trouble just acting like we knew what we were doing, like we were some authority figures. And uh, <laughs> we, we'd edit that together and it worked out well. And um, when I sort of transplanted the idea to Stittsville, uh, it still fit. And I think there's there's sort of this love affair with the, the try-hard kind of doofus in Canada um, that I think uh, is going to appeal to everyone. You, you've been at this for like a good decade now. How does Stittsville on Patrol differ from everything else you've done? Well, it's definitely not Sesame Street, uh, which I've also done. Uh, which do I'm going to ask you about. <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of kids shows. I've done uh, Pokeroo. I've done kids shows. Uh, I'm now working on sort of a, a thriller uh, movie of the week. So I really ran a gamut of things, done documentaries um, in Rwanda on the genocide. So um, nobody puts baby in a corner. I've got a pretty full no, bingo card not. there of different types of genres I've played with. But this is maybe the most fun I've ever had. Yeah. Well, and I wanted to ask you about the episode of Sesame Street, what, a year or two ago uh, you did that? What was that experience like and how did it come about for you? Yeah, that was really great. I, you know, I had pitched Sesame Street, oh, like probably... Six years ago, um, they had invited filmmakers from across Canada to Sesame Street came to the Toronto Film Festival, and they were looking for people to pitch them on, you know, those little interstitials between, you know, Big Bird's thing, and then they cut to Bert and Ernie. But in between, they might have, like, the number 12, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, mm -hmm. 6, 7, 8, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12, those little one-minute yeah. interstitials. And they actually commission those. Those get done from filmmakers around the world. And so they were looking for some, some new interstitials. They get new ones every year. And I had pitched them on one, um, actually the number 12 is what I pitched them on, and they loved it. They thought, oh, this is going to be great. And then I made it to the second round, but then they wanted to see some samples I had done, and my samples were all over the board, as I sort of was alluding to before. So I hadn't done kids' work yet. So um, uh, I didn't get it that time, but about you know four years later, I had managed to direct a kid's show, and I, went, I got the chance to pitch them again. This time, I had a very similar sample to what I was pitching, and so I ended up doing B is for Bus Driver. Um, and shooting it all in Ottawa, uh, looking at you know school buses, sort of chartered buses, and uh, and city transportation buses. Well, maybe uh, Simon in Stittsville could become a character on on Sesame Street, patrolling Sesame Street, making sure everybody else is staying on the straight and narrow on Sesame Street. 
That's right. Assets for Stitzel. I mean, uh, I think it writes itself now. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I I, I, I think we've hit on something here. Stitzville on Patrol, available now on 5 TV 1. Creator, director, writer, producer, Christopher Redmond. Christopher, congratulations on this. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks again.